Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. House Democrats this evening are ramping up their efforts to pass a new Voting Rights Act this week, but Republicans continue to oppose it. Our Washington correspondent Jesse Tenner reports now on the debate in our top story at five. I'm here on the foot of the bridge to get into some good trouble. Congresswoman Terry Sewell introduced Democrats' latest voting rights legislation from her hometown of Selma, Alabama, where many marched and some were beaten while fighting for civil rights. As John Lewis would say, he shed a little blood on this bridge for the equal right to vote for all. Americans. The John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act would require approval from the Justice Department before states with a recent history of voter discrimination can change election laws and procedures. The U.S. Supreme Court struck down a similar requirement in 2013. This is about restoring equal access to the ballot box. The release of new census data adds to Democrats' urgency to pass the measure, with concerns some states will draw maps that don't give growing minority populations fair representation. Congress must act, and we have the power to do so. During a House Judiciary Subcommittee hearing Monday, Tennessee Democrat Steve Cohen said the legislation will combat new election laws in Republican-led states. Measures to further deny or bridge citizens' right to vote on account of race, color or language minority status. It is easier for eligible Americans to vote than ever before. But Louisiana Republican Mike Johnson argues the legislation is purely political. Would amount to an unconstitutional federal power grab over local election laws. Speaker Pelosi says the House will vote on the legislation next week. In Washington, Jesse Tenor, KCAU 9 News. The U.S. Census released population data for 2020 recently showing growth for nearly every urban city here in Siouxland. North Sioux City, however, topped the list for fastest growing city in the area as their population increased from around 2,500 to more than 3,000 residents. That's a rate of roughly 20 percent. A city economic developer spoke on why the town is growing so quickly. Some of the tax benefits, you know, not having um, personal income tax, corporate income tax, having a lower property tax rate. Um, there's some very clear, tangible benefits to being in North Sioux City and in the state of South Dakota. City officials expect the high population growth trend to continue over the next 10 years' time, pointing to adequate industrial businesses continuing to come to and expand in the area. A Woodbury County inmate has died following a suicide attempt. Andrew J. Espinoza of Sioux City injured himself on August 12th. According to the Woodbury County Sheriff's Office, he was given CPR and taken to a Sioux City hospital. Espinoza succumbed to his injuries yesterday on the 16th. The Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation is looking into the case upon request. And the trial of a man charged in connection to a Sioux City stabbing began today with the beginning of jury selection. 54-year-old Michael Landrum is now charged with first-degree murder. This for the death of 37-year-old Salahadina Dem of Sioux City. He is also being charged with willful injury to a 43-year-old woman. On September 11th of 2020, officers found those two victims suffering from multiple stab wounds. Both were taken to Mercy One. That is where Adem died from his injuries. Officials do say they found Landrum around 2.30 in the morning. He was located on the 2100 block of Nebraska Street. They then took him into custody. While COVID-19 case numbers rise throughout Siouxland, hospitals say they're starting to see an increase in patients. Health officials are keeping in close contact with hospitals over concerns about the rising numbers in urgent care facilities. But Tyler Brock, the deputy director of Siouxland District Health, says more people going to see the doctor right now might not be a bad thing. I personally am, am fine with people who have COVID and if they're starting to feel like they need some medical attention, doing that sooner rather than later, I'd much rather have them go to the urgent care than end up you know, coming in too late and then their infection is a lot more serious than it needs to be. As the county's vaccination rate climbs to 41%, Woodbury County reported 18 people hospitalized with COVID-19 last week. And after struggling for many months to persuade Americans to get the COVID-19 vaccine, U.S. health officials could now soon face a new challenge, talking vaccinated people into getting some booster shots. As early as this week, U.S. health authorities are expected to recommend an extra dose of the vaccine for all Americans eight months after they get their second shot. 
That is according to two people who spoke to the Associated Press on condition of anonymity to discuss internal deliberations. It all means the biggest vaccination drive in U.S. history is about to get even more extensive. Nebraska's Governor Pete Ricketts made a stop in Norfolk today. This for the dedication at the Norfolk Veterans Home and Heroes Park, where the statue, our canteen lady, and an avenue of flags has been added. The life-size statue honors the Nebraska women who helped troops out during World War II. The ladies served some homemade food, coffee, and snacks as trains passed through. A symbol of the sacrifice and the volunteerism that the canteen ladies made back in World War II. And that spirit continues today in Nebraska, and we want to encourage that spirit by remembering what they did and hopefully inspiring people today to continue to serve our veterans. Ricketts was joined by the sculptor herself, Sandra Johnson, as well as other community leaders. And it's time now for a first check on the weather. Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson joining us. And Scott, you could see from all of our footage today, it was another beautiful summer day in Siouxland uh, and a breeze too. Yeah, a good amount of sunshine and warmth out there. And yeah, that breeze did help to take the edge off of the heat this afternoon as high temperatures were able to climb into the 80s and 90s once more. 90 degrees in Sioux City, Lamar's in Yankton. 89, the high temperature for Wayne this afternoon, getting up to 84 in Storm Lake. We've had a very persistent drought here in Siouxland. This is the drought drought conditions through the past year. You can see that at least some segment of Siouxland has had a continuation of those drought conditions for the past 12 months. So it does look like we will have a degree of relief from the drought as we head into the weekend, a chance of having some showers and storms for a change. We'll have a preview of the precipitation potential there. It's all coming up in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Scott. Hostess Brands is tonight recalling some hamburger and hot dog buns because of potential listeria and salmonella contamination. That includes Hostess soft white hamburger and hot dog buns. Both listeria and monocytogenes and salmonella are organisms that can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections in young children, older adults, and people with weakened immune systems specifically. So far, no illnesses have been reported. You could find batch numbers and best buy dates to look out for online on our website right now. That's SiouxlandProud.com or click this story on the KCAU 9 mobile news app. Breast cancer is the second most common cause of cancer deaths in women in the United States. And while many cases are treated with chemo and radiation, a lot of patients are wondering if their cancer will return. Jennifer Jordan explains how their questions are being answered. we've identified is that there are features, patterns in the biopsies that can actually tell us as to which cancers are more aggressive. Professor of Biomedical Engineering at Case Western Reserve University, Anant Matabushi, is the lead scientist in this two-year groundbreaking study using artificial intelligence or AI to predict whether the cancer will come back. He says patients who had less aggressive cancer tended to have a more chaotic arrangement of a common protein found throughout the body, collagen. Women who tended to have more aggressive breast cancer with worse outcome were the women who had more structured ordered collagen. Matabushi adding 60% of newly diagnosed cancer patients in the U.S. will go bankrupt for treatments that may not even be necessary. This strategy could potentially alleviate toxicity because of the chemotherapy but also the financial toxicity. A future where breast cancer patients will no longer worry if and when the cancer could return. And after a deadly earthquake struck the island nation of Haiti, Tropical Storm Grace is now hampering their desperate search for potential survivors. The death toll tonight has climbed to more than 1,900. Nearly 10,000 people were left injured. Hospitals, of course, overwhelmed as survivors seek care. The double dose of devastation with the storm and earthquake prompting the U.N. to step in, allocating $8 million for recovery efforts. This money will provide essentials such as health care, clean water, emergency shelter, and sanitation for people impacted by this disaster. Our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that access to the southern peninsula where the quake hit is challenging because gangs are controlling movements. 
Rescue operations are starting up again now that that storm has officially passed, but officials do say the chances of finding people alive in that rubble is diminishing. Many women in Afghanistan now face an uncertain future as the Taliban takes over. We hear some of their concerns coming up in about 10 minutes. And it's going to stay sunny, breezy, and warm for a couple more days here before the arrival of a cold front on Friday. That's going to bring about some rain chances, and we'll have a preview of how much rain could fall in the 9 on 9 forecast. That's next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Continuing through Friday, that chance of seeing some thunderstorms as we cool things off into the mid 80s. Looks like Saturday should be pretty nice if you have some outdoor plans for this weekend. Sunday, a chance of some additional storms cropping up, and then it looks like quiet weather through the remainder of the 9 on 9 forecast with highs in the low to mid 80s and some bright sunny skies down the road. Speaking of which, here's a beautiful sunset that occurred out in Kingsley, Iowa. Thanks to Rich for snapping this picture. You can see a couple kayaks there enjoying their time on the water. If you have a picture that you want to share with us, make sure to find our website, SiouxLandProud.com. Go to the Weather tab, send us your photos. Gotta get on a kayak at least once this summer. It's beautiful. It'd certainly be fun. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Well, a close call for one Florida man sleeping in his car during Tropical Storm Fred. Now things took a turn for the worse quickly coming up in about seven minutes. But first, many Afghan women now afraid to leave their homes as the extremist group that once stoned women is back in power. Why they fear for their freedoms next. In Holstein, Jason Taktagian. In Okaboji, Mallory Smith. In Sioux Center, Iowa, Nick Wilson. In Hinton, Lydia Vasquez. In Cherokee. In Lamars. In Laurel, Nebraska. In South Sioux City. KCAU 9 News. We are everywhere. The Taliban has vowed to respect women's rights, forgive those who resisted them, and ensure a secure Afghanistan. But many Afghans remain skeptical, and some women there say their rights have already been stripped away. Amid the uncertainty of the Taliban takeover, women in Afghanistan are terrified. For me, I'm afraid of these things. First of all, my life. Uh, For Zana Koche is a member of the Afghan parliament. For sure, I'm afraid of myself, my life, and my, my freedom to work and my freedom to speak up. According to the UN, nearly 250,000 Afghans fled their homes since the end of May, ahead of Western countries withdrawing all their troops. 80% of the displaced are women and children. Nilofar is one of them. She's a teacher and a mother of six. Afghans fear the Taliban will soon impose their strict interpretation of Islam, eliminating women's rights and bringing back brutal punishment for those who disobey. One female mayor told the British press, quote, I'm sitting here waiting for them to come. There is no one to help me or my family. I'm just sitting with them and my husband, and they will come for people like me and kill me. I can't leave my family, and anyway, where would I go? It's a sentiment felt by thousands of Afghan women, wondering if they will survive. No one knows that where we are going and where this will end up. Well, news Nation Prime is the country's only live national newscast in prime time, and it comes your way every night at 7 Central on News Nation. At 6, there is the Donlin Report. Here's a preview. Tonight on the Donlin Report, embarrassed on a global stage how the U.S. plans to regain trust in the world after its exit from Afghanistan, and the answers veterans of America's longest war want from the Biden administration. Now here's Leland Vittert with a preview of On Balance. Thanks, Joe. Financing their reign of terror, how the Taliban has amassed their power, plus the disturbing reason they have no problem with the U.S. withholding foreign aid. What you need to know about the inner workings of the Taliban, that's coming up on Balance tonight, followed by News Nation Prime. Again, that comes your way every night at 7 Central on News Nation. Some of the channels listed here, or just be sure to check your local guide. Well, it's already being called a miracle as Tropical Storm Fred tore through the state of Florida, knocking down trees. One man found himself in a sure-death situation. We'll tell you how he survived next. One Florida man had a close call in the middle, middle of Tropical Storm Fred. When he stepped outside, a strong gusts of wind were knocking down trees in the area. Courtney Mims explains why he's lucky to be alive. I was just sitting down in my friend's room and all of a sudden I heard a big pop like 
louder than a gunshot, and I, you know, I heard my best friend, she was screaming, somebody called 911. It was a nightmare come to life for Tracy Skipper as she watched from the laundry room as a gust of wind brought down a tree from across the street right on top of the car that her friend, Charles Schumann, was in. My, my first reaction was fear, yeah, yeah, definitely fear for him. The tree came down right in the middle of the vehicle, trapping Schumann inside while the storm raged on. Shaking, and he was kind of pinned in. He couldn't move much, and uh, we didn't see any blood pulling anywhere, and he told us what day of the week it was, and he told us his name, so we, we were safe there. We just prayed at that point and waited for the, the 911 responders. Long said those first responders were there in less than 10 minutes and had to cut the tree off of the car in order to get Schumann out. They were able to do that and get him to the hospital, but Skipper says it was still a close call. They, one of the workers said that had he looked up for the snapping of the tree, he probably would be dead. But rather than that, they, he said they probably heard the power lines pop first, which made him lean forward, and that probably saved his life. Skipper met him at the hospital and was surprised to hear that Schumann only had a head laceration and was put in a neck brace. After seeing what he went through, it could have been 100 times worse. Well, when Grandpa, he wasn't here, but yeah, he uh, he's already dubbing it the Millville Miracle. We Look, this tree smashed all the way down past the hood. It, it, it is somewhat of a miracle that he's not hurt. We take a live look outside right now from downtown Sioux City. Scott returns right after this break with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. Before we wrap up here at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, another sunny day here in Siouxland, Sophie. Coming up at 6, the first release of the local data from the 2020 census shows a changing Iowa. Sioux City posted a slight population gain, meanwhile. Coming up tonight at 6, reporter Dylan Adams takes a closer look at the numbers and how Siouxland is sitting. Also at 6, the Iowa State Fair features the best of uh, agriculture, state history, and of course, food on a stick. We all know that. But the organizers also have set aside today to honor Iowa veterans. We'll head to Des Moines for the event. That's coming up right after World News. And Sophie, that's when Jake and I will join you and Scott. See you then. All right. Thanks so much, Tim. Yeah, I'm, I'm all about that. Fair food is probably the biggest draw for me, especially fried Oreos. I don't know why. Yeah, it's certainly pretty good out there. Uh, looks like the weather should be, well, fairly similar to what we've experienced these past few days. 67, the overnight low temperature for tonight, clear and warm. 91, the high for tomorrow, sunny and staying relatively hot. Looks like it'll be in the 90s again on Thursday before we start to cool things down with some rain. Summer sticking around. Thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 6. And until then, have a great night.